the month of Ramadan is host to Laylatul Qadr. And what is Laylatul Qadr? Laylatul Qadr is the title given to that night in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went from Mr. Muhammad, Mr. Al-Amin, Mr. As-Sadiq to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is the night in which he received revelation. And if you take the entire timeline of creation, the entire history of the world, and you take all of the events and you put them in one timeline, the flood of Nuh alayhi salam, this punishment of that qawm, all of these things, the single most impactful event that the world has experienced was when Jibra'il alayhi salam came down and brought the first five verses of Surah Alaq to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That was the most impactful day that this whole universe experienced. Where we received wahi, the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The whole universe received the guidance. Prior to the Quran, prior to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa every Prophet came with a message. They came with a mission. They carried out their ministry. It was always confined to a certain era, a certain area, era and area, a certain geography. But the Prophet ﷺ came as a universal prophet with a universal message. And it is to celebrate that night. It is to commemorate that night that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has added the layer of fasting, not just for one night. It's not like we fast only one day following the night of Qadr. Allah has added blessings to the entire month because of one night. And then added an element of fasting to that entire month so that we can train ourselves to suppress our basic needs by suppressing our digestive system, by parking aside, paying attention to one's carnal desire during the day. It allows us to focus on what feeds it allows us to divert our attention from what feeds the body to what feeds the ruh. And what does the ruh feed on? The ruh feeds on closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ruh feeds on the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The angel that had the angel Jibra'il alayhi salam in charge of bringing revelation to all of the prophets, including the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, what is his nickname? What is his title? Anyone? Ruh al Qudus. Ar Ruh Tanazalul Malaika tu war Ruh. So our spirit feeds on, our Ruh feeds on revelation. And that's how we get ourselves close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for the last 20 days, well, 26, 27 days now, we we're focusing our attention on our ruh. We have two existence. There's two things. We are a combination of two things. Our vessel, the blood, the flesh, the aspect that we can take a temperature of, that we monitor the sugar of. And then inside that, there is the ruh. So for the past 25, 26 days, we suppressed our body. We kept it hungry. We kept it thirsty so that we can feed the ruh. And guess what? The first 10 days, our body takes the passenger seat and our ruh is in charge. Right? And then in the mid 20 days, the body goes into the back seat while our ruh is in charge. And this whole training and this whole experience is meant to get us ready for the last 10 nights where what do we do with the body? So what can you do with the body? I know it's a weird question, right? So when you want to get rid of the body, passenger seat, if it's not in the passenger seat, in the back seat, where does it go from the back seat? <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> These 10 nights is when the ruh, puts the body into the trunk 
and closes the trunk shut. And that's why we are finding us ourselves here after having a long work day and a long school day. Our bodies are tired. Our bodies don't want to be here. Our bodies want to be laying down. Our bodies want to be sleeping. Our bodies want to be resting. But you know what? The ruh is in charge. And the ruh doesn't care about what your body thinks, what your body's saying. Remember, it's in the trunk. Let me out. Let me go to sleep. No, shut up. It's two o'clock in the morning. I'm going to be at the masjid and I'm going to be here and I'm going to worship. You can find your sleep later. And it is such a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to find ourselves experiencing something very unique. So when we are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is overdrive, right? We are all in overdrive right now. So we are all attending Qiyam. When in our worship, when is the time that our body finds the most rest as we worship? Excuse me? Sujood. Brothers and sisters, folks, we are at a point in Ramadan, we are at a point in our lives where the body is getting the rest it needs as our foreheads are on the ground before sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the rest we are giving our body. You want rest? In sujood. And The closest that a person can be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when that person is in sujood. This is what the entire experience of Ramadan is all about. This is what Laylatul Qadr and the last 10 nights is all about. Imagine. So the first 20 days are a buildup to this peak, to this climax, this euphoric spiritual high. Imagine if the 10 days of Ramadan wasn't the last 10 days. Imagine if it was the first 10 days. Realistically speaking, how hard would it be to acclimate to that? Going from zero to 100 overnight. Right? Oh, announcement made. Inshallah, we're fasting tomorrow and that means we're doing Qiyam tomorrow. Oh my God. And think about it. Imagine if it was in the first 10 days, what would happen for the rest of the month? All right, Chalo. Let's say you got 10 days to prep and the, 10, the, the blessed 10 nights is in the middle. Okay, we got some time to get accustomed to it. Then what would happen? And the last 10, it would kind of slope down. It is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Laylatul Qadr is sought after, is searched for in the last 10 nights of Ramadan so that the entire 20 days of fasting, the entire 20 days of worship and getting close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala acclimates us and gets us hyped up so that we can be engaged the way we are in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Subhanallah. And the fact and the element of mystery and suspense that has been, that is a part of this experience where you cannot put your money on any one particular night. You want Laylatul Qadr? Well, guess what? You're going to have to hustle for it. Not just one night, for the entire 10 nights. And <coughs> according to narrations of the Prophet Wasallam, on the odd nights, chalo, we got that. We got the odd nights. So a one in five shot. But how do you know for sure? You got to take every shot. You have to be engaged on every single one of those nights to see. And this is the layer of suspense that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept for us as a mercy and blessing of Allah subhanahu, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fact that we find ourselves doing this as a community, doing this as a unit, right? Where, you know what? It may have been, yes, there is a, there is a virtue and there is a, a, a certain level of spirituality that is to be obtained and attained from doing ibadah in your, uh, in your lonely time. This is something that the Prophet ﷺ stressed on. His tahajjud was by himself. What did the Prophet ﷺ say in Medina? Afshu salam wa at'imu at'am wa sallu bil-layli wa nasu 
niyam. Spread salams, break bread with each other, and pray when everyone else is sleeping. <coughs> Get up and pray then. So there is a closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is drawn from worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. But then, folks, there is this energy. There is this energy that just runs through the lines as we stand with our shoulder, shoulder to shoulder and elbow to elbow and for some toes to toes, right? There is this energy that just flows through the jama'ah that allows us to enjoy worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together. And a family that prays together stays together. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to always pray together and allow us to always stay together. And not just in this world. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the opportunity, for the gift, and for the blessing of being in each other's company in the hereafter. To see each other underneath the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's throne, everyone looking for a pillar or a wall to lean behind. To lean on, right? While the entire khala'iq and the creation is worried and horrified and terrified. Imagine the terror of the day of judgment, right? Where, you know what? The, it will be so horrific and so much terror just waiting. Have you ever waited for something? How many of anyone over here gets like really irritated waiting for something, right? Like you show up to the appointment, like every doctor's office. You show up to the appointment on time, 10 minutes before time. Okay, you check in, wait 45 minutes. <laughs> he agrees with me, right? Wait 45 minutes, right? Hurry up and wait. So the same thing, a person will get so frustrated because of the wait, because of the terror and the horror. You know what? Just go ahead and get started. Just get started. Let's get this line moving. Even if that, there's no guarantee where I'm going to end up or fall. Just get the line started to find ourselves underneath the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's throne on the day of judgment. And this is reserved for seven categories of people. And one of them is a person who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in isolation and he starts crying. And another one, Rajulani tahabba fillah, ijtama alayhi wa tafarraqa alayhi. Two people who meet each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I love you. Why? Because you're my brother. I love you. Why? Because you're my brother, my younger brother. I love you because you're my older brother. <laughs> right? That's it. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to pray together and to stay together with love in this world and for us to find each other underneath the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's throne on the day of judgment. May, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us on this night, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow this night to be Laylatul Qadr. May we be in the presence of the angels. May we, may we benefit from the arrival of Jibra'il alayhi salam. Right? Imagine, Jibreel alayhi salam has no business coming back to earth after revelation closed. But there's one day that we get to visit him and he gets to visit us. The ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being his khalil, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would love and enjoy the company of Jibreel alaihi salam, and as an extension of that, being in the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, no other ummah was visited by Jibreel alaihi salam after the Prophet's mission was over, and we get this one night, and that's where we are standing, so that when he visits us, he sees us worshiping, he sees us reciting, he sees us making du'a, and then informs Allah subhanahu wa taala of what he saw. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who fall, who, who are mentioned in that report. Ameen. Jazakumullahu khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept everything that we have done and everything that we are doing and everything that we have yet to do. Ameen. Jazakumullahu khair. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Ya ibad. 
يا عبادي الذين آمنوا إن أرضي واسعة فإياي فاعبدون كل نفس ذائقة الموت كل نفس ذائقة الموت ثم إلينا ترجعون والذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات لنبوئنهم من الجنة غرفا من الجنة غرفا تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها خالدين فيها نعم أجر العاملين